Hi there, my name is Lawrence Tyndall here at Glidefast Consulting, and in today's ServiceNow tutorial, I'm going to cover software models in ServiceNow. By the end of this tutorial, you'll understand what software models are, why software models are important, and how to create a software model in ServiceNow. Before we go into the system, I want to explain what a software model is and why it's important to create them for your software asset management program. So a software model is a record in ServiceNow that is used to store the profile of a software application that you've purchased and also contains product specific attributes. A software model is also used for tracking the overall compliance of your purchased software licenses. Software model records typically include information such as the publisher name, the product, the version and edition. In order to create a software entitlement record in ServiceNow, you'll need to have a software model already created. Now that we've covered what a software model is, let's go into ServiceNow and create one. For today's demo, we're going to be creating a software model for Microsoft SQL Server 2019. The first thing you'll want to do is open up ServiceNow, go into the filter navigator and type in software models. Now click on the software models module located underneath the product models application. You'll now be taken to the out of the box software models list view where you can see all of the software models in the system. Now to create a new software model, simply click on the new button located on the top right of the list view. A blank software model form will now load. In the first field we have Publisher. This field is used to track who the publisher of the software model is. For today's example, we're going to be selecting Microsoft since they're the publisher of SQL Server. The next field we have is Product. This field is used to track the specific product of this software model. We'll be selecting SQL Server for this example. Next we have the Discovery Map field. This field is used to select a discovery map, which is a record that contains a set of conditions that determines a list of discovery models for a given software model. A discovery model relates software installation records to software models. When you set up a vendor integration included in SAS license management, it creates the models for you. The discovery map can already be filled in as part of that process or as part of normalization. In cases where a software model has a discovery map, the publisher, product, version and edition fields are set as read-only to preserve the relationship to the discovery map. In the next set of fields, version condition and edition condition, these fields are used to filter and limit what software installations relate to a particular software model. For today's example, we're going to select 2019 as the version and standard as the edition. This will ensure only software installations that meet these version and edition requirements are related to this software model. Next we have the platform field. This field is used to determine what platform this particular software model is typically installed on. You can select Windows, Mac OS or Unix. For today's example, we're going to select anything as we don't want to limit what operating system SQL Server is potentially installed on. In the next field, Language, this field is used to specify the specific language of the software model you're looking to track. In today's example, we don't want to limit the software based upon the language pack, so we'll leave this field as anything. Next we have the License under Management field. This field allows you to specify if you're actively managing the licenses for this specific software model. If you uncheck this field, the software model won't be included in software reconciliation results. For today's example, we're going to leave it checked. After that field, you'll notice we have a software install condition section and a subscription condition section. These two sections allow you to specify a subset of software installations and subscriptions that should be counted during the reconciliation process for software installations. Building conditions are pretty straightforward as you can simply build a filtering criteria against any of the fields on the software installation or subscription tables. For demo purposes, we won't be adding a software install condition or subscription condition as we want to relate 
and count all SQL Server 2019 installations to this model. Now that we've completed the main section of the form, let's take a look at the tabs towards the bottom. In the first tab, General, this section of the form contains all of the general information about the software model. As you can see, we have short description, status, asset tracking strategy, asset tracking unit, cost, owner, next version, certified, restricted software, and license all installs accessed by clients. For demo purposes, we're going to leave these fields as is. In the next tab, Suite Components, this tab allows you to specify what software models are child components to this particular software model. For example, if your software model was Microsoft Office, then Microsoft Word and Excel would be Suite Child Components. By having this structure, you're able to associate other software models and related installation records to a parent software model in order to calculate the correct license counts. For today's demo, we're going to leave this section blank. In the next tab, Sweet Parents, this tab allows you to specify what software models are parent components to this particular software model. This tab is pretty much the same as the previous tab, but this one allows you to specify the Sweet Parent component. In the Microsoft Office example we previously used, this would be where you'd want to select Microsoft Office since that would be a parent component to Word or Excel. In the next tab, Product Catalog, this tab allows you to define a description for this software model, which will be displayed in the service catalog if you were to publish this software model to the software catalog. From here, you can also add a picture which will be displayed on the software catalog. Publishing a software model to the service catalog can be accomplished by clicking the related link below this section. However, we will be skipping that for today's demo. In the final tab, Activity, this tab allows you to enter work notes about the software model. This could include information around you phasing out the model, or maybe some other internal information about the software. Now that we've completed populating the software model, click on the Submit button to create the record. Now if we go back to the software model record, you'll notice that there's now several related lists towards the bottom of the form which include Software Product Life Cycles. This related list is automatically populated with publisher-issued lifecycle dates which come from the Software Asset Management Content Service. These dates help you understand what stage the software is in from the publisher's standpoint. If this related list is empty, it is most likely due to a missing discovery map. The Software Product Lifecycle related list can be populated manually if that happens. Software Entitlements This related list displays all of the software entitlements that are related to this software model. Entitlements can be created manually by clicking on the New button on the related list or as part of the Entitlement Bulk Import feature, which we will cover in another tutorial. Software Model Results this related list displays compliance information that is collected from the product results list after reconciliation is run. Metric Attributes This related list displays all of the metric groups that are associated with this particular software model. Vendor Catalog Items This related list allows you to create different vendor catalog items for the various vendors that you procure your software from. Client Access this related list allows you to add a client access record that specifies the number of devices or users that can access a particular version of this software. Downgrade rights. In this final related list, you can add and view what prior versions of the software model you can use and still have the right to use the software as part of the current software version. And that is all for this tutorial on how to create software models in ServiceNow using Software Asset Management Professional.